Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are delighted to have Acharya Prashant with us. Sir, first of all, our heartiest congratulations to you for receiving the prestigious Most Influential Vegan Award 2022 from PETA. Uh, from being an acclaimed Vedanta exegete to a national best-selling author of over 100 books, Acharya Prashant is a powerful voice of socio-spiritual awakening in today's world. Today, tens of millions of people, especially the youth, get inspired daily by Acharya Prashant through his direct contact with people and through various online channels, he continues to bring clarity to all. Sir, it's an honor to welcome you uh, to address our institute. On behalf of Sir JJ College of Architecture, we thank you for accepting our invitation. My pleasure. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Gauri. So my question is that, um, in all those years, uh, I have faced like uh, my, a lot of self-doubt. Like I believe self-doubt is at some points important because it um, teaches us how to self-examine oneself. But at many areas, I uh, this self-doubt did turn into anxiety, and uh, this stopped me from uh, pursuing many of the um, dreams which I could have like changed uh, changed my uh, life and everything. So I wanted to know how to stop these negative thoughts and like pursue what the opportunity life has to offer for me. Gauri, right? Yes, sir. Wonderful. What is self doubt? How do you define it? So for me, I feel that um, self doubt is something which, my love, there is an inner voice which tells me that no, you cannot do this. Cannot do what? What is the this? Task. This? The what? Task. Which task? Which specific task? Um, I feel some people are more better than me, and uh, in pursuing, in person, like um, I'm. My love, there were many instances. So, like. Um, like becoming the seminars uh, head and co-head. At that moment, I felt like there were other people who could have done it better than me. And um, yeah, but I then pushed myself. Ki, okay, so that was the one time. So self-doubt is an inner voice, something from the mind that says, uh, you're not good enough, you're not uh, fit enough. Hmm? You're not worthy or that others are better than you in this thing. That's what self-doubt is, right? Am I good enough for this? That's what self-doubt says. See, the rule here is if it is something that you can really heartfully love, then you deserve it. You are worthy enough. Simple. Do you understand this? There is nothing in the entire life, in the entire universe, especially in the inner world, that is uh, good enough, beautiful enough to be loved and yet too big or too distant to be achieved. If it can be loved, it can be achieved. Your love makes it yours. Full stop. So the achievement then, if you see, is not even dependent on the object you are talking of on the target you have in mind. No. The achievement or the probability of achievement depends only on the trueness, the vigor, the purity of your love. Self-doubt is then not a doubt on your capability. It is a doubt on the depth of your love. And there is a great difference between these two, please see. Because capability is something that takes time. You cannot build capability overnight, or can you? Capability is also something that you may never actually be able to build beyond a point. 
For example, if you are five feet two, you can hardly aspire to become a national basketball player. Right? It's not therefore a matter of capability and that's a great relief. It's a matter of the depth of your love. And love does not require time to build. Love requires clarity. Do you really know your target? That's the question. Do you really know what you want? Do you understand your own desire? And if the object of your desire you know to be worthy enough, that itself inspires and empowers you. I know what I want. I know the thing that I want and I know why that thing I must have. And therefore, I will have it because there is no other option. I'm not going to desire any random miscellaneous thing because that's a wastage of life and time, no? To just run after this and that. Yes, Kauri? To ask for this in the morning, that in the afternoon and something totally different in the night and that's the course of the usual kind of desire, no? At this moment you are wanting this, another moment you are wanting that. That which appears so lucrative right now becomes very disinteresting tomorrow morning. Does that not happen? We are not talking about that kind of desire. Not at all. We are talking about desire that you cannot live without. When that happens, desire itself becomes the qualification. Am I worthy enough? Eligible? Qualified? Your desire is the qualification. And true, vigorous, energetic, pure desire itself is called love. Want it rightly and want only the right thing. And then you will find that you are left with no option. To back off. You just cannot retreat. Even if you know then that your capabilities are limited, you will strive beyond your capabilities. A power within you not dependent on your capability will arise into action. Self-doubt and such things happen mostly when we start wanting something that is firstly not even worthy of being wanted. And that's the case with uh, most of us, right? Our desires are mostly blind. Do we really know why we want what we want? Do we? Sometimes we follow the crowd. Sometimes there is the trend. Sometimes there is just pure ignorance, an instinct, an impulse arising from the body, or your past, or your experiences, or the pressures the society applies on you, and you just run after something, be it an educational degree, be it a particular type of career, a job offer, a thing, something in the market, a new dress, a new vehicle, a new phone, a new gadget, a new boy, a new girl. Do you really understand why you want that thing? And as if ignorance were not sufficient, we top it up by saying love is blind. Bravo. 
somebody asks you but why are you running in that direction we don't even take the pains to understand what's going on within instead we respond with bravado what you know love is blind don't ask me why i am chasing that thing or that person because if love is true it is blind no if you are chasing something without knowing what is going on you will very soon find yourself out of motivation exhausted and in a great pall of self doubt and the result might also be then lack of self worth because if repeatedly you keep making targets and missing them very soon your internal self image becomes one of a loser i tried for this thing didn't make it wanted to be there didn't reach tried again my hand at that thing fell short so who am i who am i a loser and the more you allow that to happen to you the more you find it becomes difficult for you to believe in yourself and that happens not because i repeat gauri not because you are unworthy or incapable but because fundamentally you chose the wrong target as young people you must learn to differentiate between desire and love and that's probably the most important distinction you can ever make in life more so as people of your age because desire runs amok when you are 18 20 25 if you can know whether it is just a blind biological chemical force arising from the physical apparatus or the momentum generated by years of social conditioning and programming or something way beyond that if you can distinguish the third one from the first two that we just named you'll go a long way are we getting it hmm when something deserves to be achieved then you go after it irrespective of whether or not your current capabilities support you you simply keep aside the practical fact of your current capabilities you say it might actually be possible that factually i am not capable of going after such and such target but how does that matter i am in love therefore i don't have an therefore i don't have an come on option now this state of becoming optionless is the most beautiful state you can ever be in simply optionless simply choiceless not because you are blind but because you are seeing so clearly that you can see only one thing and nothing else greatness lies not in being super capable or super human not everybody can be a superman or a superwoman can we be hmm? greatness lies in exceeding your capabilities 
Greatness lies in fighting your limitations. In a very poetic way, greatness lies in not even caring for your limitations. Not because you are mad, not because you are ignorant, not because you do not know your limitations, but because you are seeing something way beyond your limitations. Am I making sense or is it just all too scattered? Are we together? Yes. Thanks. You'll find people who just do not know the fact of their limited capability. And we all have limited capability, right? There is nobody who is not limited. There are some people who, because of their misplaced ego and blurred inner vision, do not know the fact of the limitations of their capability. So they boast a lot. They brag too much. I'm not talking about them, right? I don't even know how ignorant I am. And therefore, I keep shouting from the rooftop, I'll achieve this. I'm the best one. And you'll often find these people display zero self-doubt. They are utterly full of confidence. Have you seen a few such people? I hope not in the mirror. Have you seen such people? So full of confidence. No capability to examine oneself at all. We are keeping these ones aside. Not these. They are, they are free of self-doubt because they do not know the self. Their ignorance keeps them very confident. Hmm? Unfortunately, this kind of personality has become the hallmark of our times, has it not? A totally confident and ambitious young person, full of dark ignorance, no? Not humble, not polite, outspoken, extrovert, loud, Brash, bashful, not at all. That's not uh, uh, what we are talking of. We are talking of freedom from self-doubt. We are talking of freedom from self-doubt. That freedom comes when, when the self is in love. We are talking of the condition where you fully well know where you stand in terms of experience, capability and such things. And yet you say, I cannot give up. I have to get up. I'm in love. Maybe I'll fall a thousand times. Maybe I'll be defeated a thousand times. But I'll never be finally defeated because, because, because. Huh? So it's love that wins you wars. It may not win you wars, but it makes you invincible. It may not make you a winner, but it will never allow you to be defeated. Because defeat is a choice. Defeat happens only when you, only when you, only when you accept that you are defeated. Hmm? Be so clear about what you want that you never accept a defeat. And in that lies the wholesome victory. Because victory by chance 
is always subject to the vicissitudes of fate. Today's victor is tomorrow's loser. Hmm? But someone who is not prepared to accept defeat because there is no life in defeat is the one who is an eternal winner. If I accept defeat, how will I live? Because to accept defeat is to accept separation from what I love. Therefore, I cannot accept defeat. I have to keep trying. And even if I spend my entire life just trying, it's a life well spent. Are we one on this? Do not give too much importance to the fact of achievement. It's not that final achievement that counts. But the vigor, intensity of your love. The indefigability of your drive. You understand fatigue? I'm tired. We want the kind of desire that never tires. Indefatigable. Never tires. Therefore, it will be with you all your life. And when it is with you all your life, life becomes lively. Life gets lit. Else why do we live? If there is not that beating heart within, why do we live? Hmm? Getting it? Self-doubt must become something intolerable. Therefore, non-existent. To doubt oneself must become the harrowing prospect of doubting your love itself. And you can't just bear that humiliation. If I doubt myself, that's equivalent to entertaining the thought that I'm not fit enough to go after that. Anything can be admitted, not this thought. Hmm? Bottom line, want very carefully. Not everything is worthy of being desired. Be free of desire as much as possible. Don't run after every second thing. But when you do indeed choose something to go after, devote your entire life to that. Flimsy objects do not deserve your attention. Worth should be a central criteria. Hmm? It should be someone who says, I do not want much. I do not want frequently. But that which I want, I want with all my might. I want with all my life. Let me know when it is becoming set. Thank you, sir.